Should I go for one column or two column resumes? Can I have a two page resume? Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and today we are talking about resume templates. Resumes are the first step in your job search process. So a big question with resume is, what resume template should I use? In today's video, I will show a simple resume template in Latex that I created using Overleaf. I will go over different sections and I will also talk about what to include and what not to include in them. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to create a new project and here's your first tip. Always name your file as first name underscore last name. So for me, that would be Kajal underscore Gada underscore resume. I'm starting with a blank document here. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the boundaries. If you feel you need more or less space, you can always change this as per your needs. Let's start with your name. And because this is the most important thing, let's make it a little larger than the rest of the text. Next, let's add your contact details. I usually include my email ID and my phone number. Lastly, you should include a link to your online portfolio. It could either be a personal website or your LinkedIn profile. Let's make this centered and add a horizontal line. This makes it clean and easy to read. This brings us to an important question. One column or two column resumes? I have a personal preference for one column resume simply because they are easier to read. With two column resume, I feel there's a lot of information thrown in front of the eye and I don't know where to read. So I would opt for a one column resume. Let's start with our first section, objective. This is your quick pitch on who you are and what you want. Simplest example for me, I'm a roboticist with three years of professional experience and I'm looking for full-time senior software position starting January, 2021. You're including information about your domain. Do you have experience or not? What is it you're looking for and when can you start? For student, it could be something as simple as, I'm a graduate student looking for software engineering position starting May 2021. Those are some simple versions and you can expand to include a major achievement or a personal trait. Next comes your skill sections. Now I have seen students dump anything and everything they know in this section. Some people do divide it up into areas such as programming language, simulation software, etc. But it's still a huge dump and this is bad. You are overwhelming the reader with a whole bunch of information and expecting them to hunt for skills that are important to them. Here's what I suggest. Core competencies or skills and other competencies or skills. In here, I would highlight top three or four skills that you're good at and is relevant to the job you're applying for. For example, this position might be interested in someone who is a good Python coder versus C or C++. Also a huge no to adding Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint. If you're applying for software engineering position, your knowledge on PowerPoint brings zero value to the job. It's irrelevant remove it. The next two big sections are education and experience. Now which goes first depends on your personal story. If you're a professional currently working or has recently worked, your work comes first. This is your most recent experience and this counts for far more than your education. If you're a student with limited work experience or internship, your education comes first. Of course, there are exceptions and that depends on your personal situation. Let's start with education. Go for highest and most recent degree to the lower one. Keep it simple in terms of your university, college name, your degree and your graduation year. If you are yet to graduate, write expected. Here's how I do it. I write the name of the university and location. Next, name of degree and year of graduation. You have the option to include your GPA. Next, let's talk about work experience. This includes all industry experience that you have, including internships. 
it's best to go chronological in this starting with your most recent experience and then going backwards for each experience include the name of the company position location and the time period that you were you don't need to include the exact date just include month and year now your resume is your story as to why you are a good candidate for this position this means when you're talking about your work experience only include things that are relevant to the application so you should not include all the positions that you've had but only include positions that are relevant to the job you're applying for now your most recent experience will have more weightage so you should include more bullet points for your most recent experience in your work experience you should talk about what did you do how did you do it and what was the impact in your what you talk about the technical things that you achieved in your how you talk about the skills you used for example you coded an application using python in your impact you talk about numbers and percentages it's best to include it as bullet points and not as paragraphs you do not need to write full sentences you can start your bullet points with adjectives this is also the space to talk about your soft skills for example you took an initiative to start a new project you can also talk about your teamwork skills how you work well with others in your team or how you collaborated with a different team to bring together a feature one of the questions i often get is what to include in work experience if you don't have a summer internship or industry experience let's say you participated in a competition you can include that in work experience reason being you worked with a team to achieve a goal our next section is project work you can include all the projects you did under different courses similar to work experience you will include bullet points about what you did how you did it and what was the impact you created now some people include relevant coursework under education i suggest to include it in project work instead of simply saying that you've done course xyz you can talk about a project you've done under that course to show you really know the topic now as you start to fill in all of your work experience and project work your resume could go beyond one page this brings us to the question can we have a two page resume here's my answer no unless you're applying for a senior position such as director or vp level you do not need a two page resume most people don't look at the second page so why would you want to hide something that is important on the second page and hope the other person sees it it should be included on the first page itself which brings us to everything you want to say should be included on the first page writing a resume is not about writing everything you know it's about writing everything that is relevant to the job you are applying for you are expected to summarize everything you've done within a page next Let's talk about extracurricular activities or leadership roles. In this section, you can talk about your participation in different clubs at your university or outside of your university. You can even talk about your volunteering experience. Similar to your work experience and project work, this should also include what you did, how you did it, and what did you achieve. Again, if you don't have industry experience or internship experience, but let's say you created a club or you led a club you can include it in your work experience section however in that case i would put my project work first and then put the work experience remember this is a rough guideline on how to write your resume you can always change it and make it your own your resume is your story as to why you are a good candidate for the given job what you include under your work experience and project work is way more important than the template itself take time to think about what to write or how to frame your sentences to show your technical and soft skills if you are interested in a resume review you can reach out to me on linkedin or through my website i will include all of those details in the description below you can also find a link to this template in the description below you might also enjoy this other video from my channel where i talk about five simple hacks to upgrade your resume Before you leave if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video